conversation with a new friend yesterday that I found very, very interesting, and I thought I'd talk about it with you today. The question was in regard to a grand piano or an upright piano. And it, sometimes people will make the statement that, well, you know, if you get an upright tall enough with larger soundboard, longer string length, it, it's ever been as good as playing a grand piano. Well, there may be a measure of truth in that, but is it really true? Well, in reality, there are a lot of differences between an upright piano and a grand piano. Even a smaller piano like this that some people would refer to as a quote-unquote baby grand piano. This piano is only five foot three, but it's of really nice quality. And it brings some things to the table that an upright piano just never can. Understand this, the upright piano was invented not because it was musically superior to the grand, but to save space. And there are things that an upright piano just simply cannot do. So let's talk about what those are. Well, first of all, let's talk about the sound escapement. In an upright piano, the one behind me, I've actually taken it apart, but normally that would be all closed up and the soundboard up against a wall. In a grand piano, the lid is actually part of the sound escapement and actually casting the tone toward an audience or in an ambient nature in, in a home. Um, so that's one major difference. Another difference is the way that the pedals operate. Now, the extreme right-hand pedal, well, it does operate the same in an upright or in a grand. You play notes in staccato, or you can sustain them by depressing the pedal. We call that a sustain pedal or a damper pedal. Why do we call it a damper pedal? Well, when we depress the pedal, you'll see inside the piano the dampers that that would cause the sound not to sustain, uh, it lifts them so that it will sustain, okay? Another difference between a grand piano and an upright, and as it relates to the pedals, is actually something called a sostenuto pedal. I can actually select notes here on the piano, even without making a sound, and you'll notice that the dampers come off of the strings. If I depress the center pedal, those dampers will remain off of the strings. So while most notes would be in staccato, the notes that I selected are able to be sustained. There's classical pieces of music that were actually written and require a sostenuto pedal. It would be extremely rare to find an upright piano that would have a true sostenuto pedal. It may do that function only in the bass section, they'll call that bass sustain but typically it doesn't have the sostenuto function uh, whatsoever. The last pedal, uh, the leftmost pedal, let's say, is actually a pedal that everyone can use. I, you may say, well, I'm not classically trained, I'm not gonna play those pieces of music to require the center pedal, but the left pedal is a, a special pedal and does something very unique to a grand piano uprights never do. If you'll notice, when I depress the left pedal, if you'll watch the keys very closely, the keys will actually shift over, okay? And in reality, it's not just the keys, it's also the entire action and the hammers inside. So when you're playing a note uh, in, in this area, it's striking three strings. In this area, it's striking uh, two strings when we get a little bit lower. And when we depress what we call the una corda, or the soft pedal, it stands for one chord, it's Latin, it actually then aligns the hammers to only strike one string throughout the entire piano. Now let me show you, because it not only makes the sound, uh, uh, the volume of sound lower, but it will also change the, uh, the tone as well. Let me give you a little taste of that. the volume, but it actually changed the tone of the piano. 
Now follow me over here to the upright piano and I will show you that those functions actually are entirely different. The right pedal, let's just go ahead and say that it, it would be the same. It's going to lift the dampers off of the strings and sustain like it did in the grand piano. In this piano, the center pedal, rather than having a sostenuto function, it actually has a practice function where you can actually lower a piece of felt between the hammers and strings for more private practice. Okay, so in essence, it's uh, it, it, in a environment where you're having to share space if you're wanting to play quite a bit more softly they actually concede that the left pedal is not going to do what it's going to do in a grand piano what does it do let's talk about that if i depress the left pedal remember that was the unicorda pedal in the grand piano upright pianos do not have unicorda pedals ever but they do have a function that tries to mimic or decrease the amount of volume of sound and it's simply done by depressing the pedal and you will see the action will move closer to the strings, okay? So the, it, the hammers will not strike fewer strings, but it will have less space to create the inertia to, uh, to build volume of sound. Does it work? Well, we, I can try to give you a taste of that. So you can see it does decrease the volume a little bit but it does not change the tone. That's actually unique to the grand piano. So I hope these uh, items that we've talked about help. Incidentally, the notion that longer string length and larger soundboard is the answer to everything, well, the truth of the matter is, this upright piano has about 200 square inches of soundboard area more than the 5.3 grand, and it also has about four inches more length in the longest speaking length string. Does that make it superior to the grand or even equal? Well, clearly it doesn't, even though the soundboard and string length of this piano is going to mimic actually a five foot eight, five foot nine grand. So uh, you'll hear that sometimes, it, it, the good substitute being an upright piano in relationship to a grand piano. I think clearly we have demonstrated here that always, as long as quality is equal, the grand piano is a superior playing experience. I appreciate your time. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you felt that this information was uh, necessary or beneficial to you. Tell your friends. We like to educate as many people as we can when they're looking at selecting a fine musical instrument. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.